Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today I'm going to deal with a subject I keep running across when I'm uh, teaching newcomers to the sport. And that's dealing with connecting the leader to the fly line. And uh, there are some issues involved that, you know, people don't quite get or understand or it's the way they first buy their gear that starts creating some issues. So I'm going to talk about some of the alternatives, some of the ways we connect things together. Now, if you've gone out and bought one of those combo kits that has the reel, the line, the leader, the rod, the case, I mean, they're great, trust me. I, I mean, they're ideal for beginners. There's some really high quality combo units out there that do the job just lovely. However, there's one little wrinkle with those is that they've attached the leader to the fly line using a nail knot. Uh, they don't have a welded loop in the front of the, uh, the fly line. That costs extra money. So the, uh, if you, whether you buy a combo unit or you just go out and buy a budget fly line, what you'll see is there's no loop. Because if we look at this um, high quality uh, airflow a Kelly Galoop streamer line, you'll see there's a welded loop in the front of it. And that is uh, uh, done at the factory. You know, when you buy that line, it comes with the loop already on it. And what we do with that loop, and here's my uh, leader. We, we've got, I've got a perfection loop on the end of it, as you can see here. And all I do is slip it over. And there we go, we have this loop-to-loop -loop connection of the mono to the fly line. That's the ideal way to do it, is if you have one of these, you know, quality fly lines um, that are more expensive, you know, you've got your leader with the loop at the end of it that you've bought, uh, and this comes with a loop already attached, no problem. You can loop to connect, loop to loop connect you're fishing. You can change your leaders anytime you want. If your leader does not have a perfection loop at the end, well, I've got a video on tying a perfection loop, so you can tie the perfection loop on the end of your leader, you're good to go. But when we're talking about these combo units, what they've actually done is this. They come with the leader nail knotted to the end of the fly line. So it's, I call it a semi-permanent uh, arrangement. So when you go to to use this, to use your, your combo unit, and let's say your leader gets all screwed up and it's trash and you have to put a new leader on, well, you're faced with doing another nail knot uh, and that's awkward. So what I would suggest instead, yeah, cut off, uh, a, cut off the leader leaving about, oh, I don't know, six, eight inches uh, attached to the end of the fly line like I have here and you just put in this perfection loop. So now you've created a loop on the end of the line using the what's left of the butt section of your leader. So now you've got the fly line with the loop that you've made. You've got your leader with its perfection loop of its own and you just loop to loop connect the two pieces. Here we go. There's our two perfection loops uh, looped together and now you're ready to go with this. You can change your leaders anytime you want. So that's process number one. If you don't have a loop at the end of your fly line and your combo unit comes with that uh, leader already nail knotted to the end of your fly line, all you have to do is put a perfection loop on the end of it, you know, you know, cut off six, eight inches of it and put the perfection loop on and then a perfection loop knotted to your end of your fly, uh, to your leader, I should say, allows you to loop to loop connect. So now you can replace the leader and you're ready to go fishing. So if you've screwed up your leader of your combo unit and you're wondering what to do with it, as I say, cut off about six, eight inches away from the end of the fly line, keep that nail knot, that nail knot's fine. Put a perfection loop at the end of that and that becomes what we call a transition loop, which enables you to now loop to loop connect your leaders to it. And you, and, you, and you can change leaders. Every time you screw up a leader, you can put a new one on. If you want to change types of leaders, you can. So that is probably the best way to take one of these budget units and build a loop at the end so you can continually change your leaders. But there are other choices. 
So let's talk about my least favorite first. Get them out of the way. These are a braided loop, and they're commercially available. They used to be supplied with fly lines, and this one was supplied with a fly line before manufacturers were welding lines. And what you do with it is you try to, if you can, this becomes the fun bit, you try to, oh, let's trim some of this stuff off. You can see already a reason why you don't like it. Try to fatten it up. I don't have my glasses on, so this is probably not gonna work very well. Okay, I'm not having good luck with this. I forgot to get my glasses out. But uh, basically you'd push the fly line at the into the end of that braid, push it all the way up, and, uh, and then you'd put some bit of glue, maybe a nail knot at the end of it to hold it in place. But the, these things, I don't like them at all. I've had too many of them fail. They come apart, they break, they crack, things go wrong. Uh, I mean, if you're stuck, use one. But if, you're, if you have a choice, don't use them. So what else can we do? Here's an example of a, a fly line that arrived without loops. This is predates when fly fishing companies were welding loops. And all I did was fold uh, the end back and put two nail knots to hold it. It's not elegant, and this is a rear loop. Uh, this is attached the, attaches the backing to this. So I really wasn't worried about its appearance. But it is a quick and dirty way to make a loop out of your fly line, is simply fold it back uh, with a couple of nail knots to hold it in place and you're good to go. It works. I mean, I've, uh, you'd be surprised the fish this line has, has landed with that loop at the end holding on the backing, and it's seen daylight plenty of times, trust me, and it's held. I mean, this line is, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years old. It's still going strong. So there's an, one last choice. If you want to get into this, and that is welding your own loops. This one I made. This is not a factory loop. I did this one. And I've got welding uh, videos on YouTube that you can have a look at. They're very, very old. I'm thinking about redoing some of them. But uh, they, they still show you how to do it. So if you've got a fly line of your own and you want to make loops, you can get into welding loops. They do weld. Especially airflow lines, because they're made out of polyurethane, they weld extremely well. Uh, and you don't have to worry about cooking the plasticizers out of them like you do with some lines. But, you know, as I say, you know, push comes to shove. You can weld your own loops if you want to. But, you know, the, the ideal thing is if you get yourself a good quality line, it'll come with the factory loops already welded on the end of them. They're great. They work fine. Uh, don't do what some people tell you to do is cut them off and put these stupid things on. Uh, I can't understand why anybody would want to do that, but I've heard people give that advice. You know, they say, oh, no, no, cut those useless welded loops off and put one of these things on. <sighs> Who knows? So, yeah, these welded loops are great. Uh, and the other thing about them is the manufacturers have been welding loops long enough now that they've really got it down pat. And uh, the, they're quite rugged. They'll really hold together. In fact, I, I, I did some pull tests. When I did my first videos, uh, I realized some people would say, you know, well, you know, those loops aren't strong enough. Um, I actually did a pull, number of pull tests. The loops didn't break. The fly line broke. So it gives you an idea how strong these are uh, when, you've, when they're welded correctly. So that's your last choice, welded. But I would really, really recommend that if you've got one of these systems uh, that where the, the leader comes already nail knotted to the fly line, the simplest way is to simply uh, put uh, a fraction loop on the end of that, you know, cut off about six, eight inches, leave the nail knot in place, and just make a perfection loop. And now you can you know, connect your leaders to them as much as you want. This rig is the way we used to do it. You know, If you go back 30, 40, 50 years, this is how we made our loops. By nail knotting uh, some 40 or 50 pound mono to the end of the fly line, making a perfection loop in it, and that's how we connected our leaders. I mean, I've caught tons and tons and tons and tons of fish 
on this setup. So don't feel like you're going backwards with it. I mean, it's a perfectly serviceable uh, approach. And as I say, this is what we used to do before factory loops became available. So, you know, don't be afraid to do it. But whatever you do, don't go cutting off the, the leader when you've screwed it up for the first time. You know, you can make a perfection loop at the end of piece of it, and now you've got a fully functional transition loop that allows you to connect leaders as much as you want. So there you go. If you've got a, one of these combo units and the leader screw it up, it's not a disaster. You can continue fishing with it. Just make the perfection loop and put your new leader on. Cheers.